everyone, and welcome back to the Hobart Bay Sports Network. I am your host, Justin Winter, and today it's the offseason after we just barely beat Ohio State in that classic Rose Bowl. But first, we got a college football playoff to do. It's number one Virginia, number four Auburn in the Orange Bowl. Let's see who advances to the national championship. Virginia, the only undefeated team left in the nation. Who will strike first? That honor goes to Auburn. 7 0 lead. Virginia gets three points. All right. Can they take the lead? No, Auburn makes a ten, seven point lead. Sorry. And Virginia, no. Auburn, no. Virginia, yes, they tie it up. Auburn, three point lead. Make it a ten point lead again. Virginia, no. Can they get back in it? Will Auburn build? Who's going to do it first? It's a seven points for Virginia. They tie it up. Auburn scores the touchdown, and Virginia fails to score on their final drive. Auburn advances. So who will face the Tigers? It's either the Bruins or the Spartans. And we got the Fiesta Bowl between UCLA and Michigan State. Let's see who goes there. Michigan State starts off with a 7-point lead. Oh, they make it a 10-point lead. UCLA gets 3 points. And what will they do with it? Michigan State makes it a 10-point game again. UCLA brings it within three, and it's a 10-point game again. Now it's a three-point game again. Michigan State, no, UCLA leads now. Michigan State, can they get back in it? UCLA tacks on another one, 11-point game, make it an 18-point game. Michigan State, no, a 25-point game. I think it's too little too late for the Spartans, and the game will end at a 10-point deficit for Michigan State. UCLA advances to the national championship game to face Auburn in Soldier Field in Chicago, Illinois. Interesting matchup. UCLA and Auburn. Pac-12 versus SEC. Who takes it home? UCLA starts off the scoring and Auburn returns that one. And who gets the next one? Who takes the lead? It will go to the Bruins. Seven point lead. And they make it a two score lead now. Can they build on it? Answer is yes, 21 point lead for UCLA. Auburn has to get something desperate. They get a touchdown. UCLA adds a field goal. Auburn touchdown. Can they get a stop? They do. They fail. They get the ball back and it's too little too late. The UCLA Bruins are your national championship. The trophy stays in the Pac-12. Let's look at some records. I'm always down for some records. Tyree Nolan, most rushing touchdowns of anyone in his career in the NCAA at 89. He destroyed the previous record. Saw Sage with 33 sacks, two more than Spencer Johnson for career sacks. Tyree Nolan, most career receptions. He beat Bubba West by 11 catches. That's crazy. He also has the most, well, obviously has the most rushing touchdowns of anyone in Hobart Bay. Most rushing yards, 4,821. That's his final mark. For the top 25, UCLA is obviously number one after winning the championship. So, good on them. Number two is going to be Auburn with 13-2. Virginia is number three. Michigan State gets number four. We stay at number five. Washington is number six. Georgia Tech is number seven. How about that? Boise State is number eight. Number 9 is Kansas, and Wyoming is number 10. Interesting. 11 is USC, 12 is LSU, 13 is Cincinnati, 14 is Navy, 15 is UCF, how about that? 16 is Ohio State, 17 is Boston College, 18 is Clemson, they went 8 and 5. 19 is Northwestern, 20 is Stanford, Colorado is number 21. Texas is number 22. Michigan is number 23. Texas State is number 24. And Old Miss rounds us out at number 25. For All-Americans, Ephatha Decapolis gets first team All-American quarterback. He was a Heisman contender. And then obviously, you know, other guys got it. But for us, we had Dane Burns, free safety. First team All American. Normally we have way more than that. He's the only first team All American on our team. Second team, we got Tyree Nolan. It's a long shot from his Heisman days, but I guess there's nothing you can do. Probably should have gone last year. Saw Sage at left end. That's good. Continuing the tradition of a strong D line. And then Oscar McGee. He gets second team All American in his final year. I think this was the only year he started. 
Also got Seth Adams and Jacoby Jackson. So getting more defensive guys, we like that. And oh, we got Jeff Walker as well. He's a sophomore. He's coming in big. And no one else on the second team All-American list. For freshman, Bentley Zwiebel, of course. He's been he's been fantastic all year. Don't forget Steven Scott at center. That's right, Steven Scott at center. He's balling out. Aiden Mann from Nebraska. He was a custom recruit we pursued, but yeah, look at that. He's doing well. I'm glad for him. And then Carl Reynolds at defensive tackle. That's good. Who else? What of Washington and Boise State here. And then Drake Scott. So both of the Scott brothers get first team. Well, you know, not first team. They get freshman All-American honors. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to have a pretty good team in the future. It's time to go over the stats of the season. Glessner ends 8th in the nation in passing yards with 3,347. We go with rushing. Tyree Nolan, 54th. Almost 1,200. No one on the receiving list. Tackles Jeff Walker, Oscar McGee, Dane Burns. All three of them. Top three in the nation. We always leave them that. Sausage, half a sack. Half a sack behind Foster. Oh, that birds. On interceptions, yeah, we never have someone who's in that contention, if we're being honest. We, we, we just don't have a ball hawk. And then Otis Spielberg, a 61-yarder, longer than anyone else got this season. Now for the rest of the team, let's go to passing now, shall we? Glustner, he went 154 for 246, 3,347 yards. 20 touchdowns, 221 interceptions. Oh, he's even worse than Strupinski was. Even more like Jameis Winston. But he's good. I feel like maybe we failed him on coaching, honestly. He took 32 sacks. Yeah. Brett Stone only took three sacks. That's good for him. He wound up going 23 for 33, 361 yards, six touchdowns, two, one interception. That's pretty good pretty good. On the ground game, 1,196 yards for Tyree Nolan. He tacked on 20 touchdowns. Definitely not his best year. Glessner got 205 yards and 6 touchdowns. John Gordon got 114 yards and 3 touchdowns. Good on him. Brett Stone, Joseph Jacobson. Brett Stone got 4 touchdowns. He rounds out our touchdown list. On the receiving end, no 1,000-yard receivers. McIntosh with 915 and 6 touchdowns. Behind him, it wasn't Tyree Nolan, it was Bentley Zwiebel, 817 yards, also 6 touchdowns. Joseph Jacobson with 517 and 3, Joannon with 467 and 3, Tyree Nolan with 449 and 3, Ken Anderson with 284 and 2, Gordon Jenkins with 120 and 2, Jamie Ross with 73 and 1, we saw that one in the Cal game. And the rest of these guys, just insignificant amounts, honestly. On tackles, obviously, it's going to be Jeff Walker and Dane Burns and Oscar McGee. All of them leading in tackles, especially solo tackles in the nation. I mean, if they led the nation, they're going to lead the team. And that's just, just how it is. 57, 55. Not sure if I should be going with regular or assisted tackles. Most tackles for loss, Dane Burns, the free safety. However, that works. 24 tackles for loss. Most sacks goes to Sausage. Second in the nation, only half, half a sack behind. Lots of good sack numbers here, too. Jeff Walker got six, four, and who had the most picks? Oh, it was Dane Burns and David Nelson. David Nelson was early in the year, but then he didn't really do much. Then Brian Baker, Oscar McGee, Drake Scott, Cedric Allen, Timothy Paulson, and Seth Adams all got one apiece. I don't know if that's more or less than normal. I can't tell. Now we go to... Kicking side, if things will ever let us. There we go. Otis Spielberg, in his senior year, he went 14 for 15. That's 93%. Long of 61. He missed an extra point? That... what? I don't remember that ever happening. Huh. He went 4 for 4. He made all of them inside of 30. He made the one between 30 and 40. He made all four between 40 and 50. And then beyond 50, he only missed one. Yeah, I mean, he's a really good kicker. He should go to the NFL. And punting Mike Holloway, 19 punts, 907 yards. His average punt was 47.7 yards. 
And after returns, he actually did get 40.1 yards. On kick returns, 33 returns, no touchdowns. McIntosh had a good year, no, just but just no touchdowns. It's uh, kind of underwhelming. Neither on the punt return game either. Not a whole lot. Average 14 yards, but you know what? He's been good throughout the years, and I'm thankful for it. Well, that means we advance to the offseason proper. We're done with stats. We're done with finding out the playoff. And we get a contract extension. Big shocker. Look at that. Been rising up. A little bit of a fall recently. But you know what? We've still had some great years. Even if we haven't won championships. That's going to bring us to the next stage. It's players leaving. This one always stings. I mean, always stings. All right. First up, Andrew Glessner is going to the NFL Draft. First round projection. Joseph Jacobson, also a first round projection. That's interesting. Dane Burns, a second rounder. Seth Adams, it looks like, is also going. He's a second rounder, only a junior. That's good on him. Blair Wilcox, the punter, who would start next year, is going to leave. And he's seven feet tall. I forgot about that. Paulson is going to stay. McIntosh is going. He's a projected second rounder. The size isn't helping. Nolan is a fourth rounder. Randall Williams is a fourth rounder. I don't know how much I called his name. And Cedric Allen, he's a sixth rounder. And then Jamie Ross is graduating. Jacoby Jackson isn't going? Oh, man. That's rough. Oscar McGee, he's not going. Sauce Sage isn't going? Oh, no. Oh, just Spielberg isn't going. We have some guys who I think really should go to the draft. They really should be. JoJo McIntosh. Let's review his career. Only 95 career catches. Would have expected more. He got two returner of the years. Nearly 3,000 yards receiving. Granted, his first year here was solely on return duty. 24 touchdowns, long of 89. Had a pretty good career here. Pretty good career. Only six drop passes, none of them in his final year. So that's pretty good. JoJo McIntosh, a legend of a receiver. Thankful for him. Great returner, too. But Tyree Nolan. This guy is arguably the greatest guy in Hobart Bay history. Winning multiple Doak Walkers and Walter Camps. He won a Maxwell, and he also won the Heisman in his junior year. The dude wound up getting almost 5,000 yards. 4,821 to be exact, averaging over 5 yards a carry. He got 89 touchdowns, more than anyone else in college football history. His longest run was 72 yards in his sophomore year. He got almost 1,000 yards after his first contact and 34 rushes of more than 20 yards. 16 broken tackles, only 3 fumbles, none of them in his final year. That was good. But aside from his fantastic rushing, he was also a great receiver. He ended with 2,462 receiving yards. I'm pretty sure that's more than Joseph Jacobson got. 27 rushing touchdowns and a long catch of 75. This guy was a beast. He was going all out every single game. He's just an athlete. Quite frankly, I'm surprised he's not higher in the draft just because of his versatility. The man's a monster. Definitely in the running for best Hobart Bay one to ever put on the uniform. I gotta say, with over 7,000 total yards, he, he would earn that one. Now, it's our annual reflection that we do not indeed have transfer players, so let's just move on to our recruiting. Shannon Flowers, we could use an extra quarterback. He'll sit behind Brett Stone, though, so, I mean, it won't be much for him. And then Guy Lott, I guess we need a kicker now, so we're going to put 2,000 on him. And then Tony Roberts, we'll just slap the rest on him, because why not? Yeah. See if we can rob UCLA of a four-star. And now we're... Advancing on to signing day, we got Shane Fla or Shannon Flowers and Tony Roberts. Guy Lott didn't do anything. Did he commit at all? He didn't commit at all. Okay, I'm going to fix that. We're going to get a walk on and I'm going to make him Guy Lott because he should have committed here. All right, I'm going to fix that. We have Shannon Flowers as a quarterback. That's nice. Tony Roberts at wide receiver. TJ Jones at middle linebacker. Corey Bailey at free safety. TJ Edwards at free safety as well. Austin Day at middle linebacker. Brandy Markward at running back. Chris Maxey at defensive end. Brian Fitzpatrick, another middle linebacker. Dominic Anderson, outside linebacker. Brandon Butler, another outside linebacker. Defensive end, Nick Washington. Titus Walden, also a defensive end. Nick Miller, corner. Oh my goodness. Defensive tackle, Dale Ronson-Kirken. And athlete, Terry Johnson. 
And for all of that, we will get the number four class behind what Washington State, Boise State, and Washington all got better classes than we did. Three teams in our division got better classes than we did. Washington State somehow without a five star, and they went four and eight too. USC also giving the Pac-12 credit at the number 10 class. Michigan State, Clemson. I just don't understand how we got beat by three teams in our same division. I don't get it. Terry Johnson is the only athlete we have. Him, we are actually going to move him to the wide receiver spot. We could always use a nice wide receiver. Then for training results, it's the average. You can pause if you want and look at this, but nothing is special, especially since we're not using the revamped progression tool. Not here. Mike Holloway, he's going to wind up being our kicker. And uh, yeah, that's all for training results. As far as cutting guys, I don't remember recruiting Roshan Hughes. So yeah, he's gone. And then at running back, Kyle Reddick, he's gone. Mac Lloyd, you're not staying either. Moving on to fullback, nope, we're good there. Wide receiver, who are we going to cut? We could cut Tony Roberts. But you know what? We're not going to. Brandon Peoples, we will cut, as well as Trey Pendleton, because those guys are worse than Roberts, and we're just going to see if there's anyone else, and see if we can spare Roberts from getting cut from the team. No one on the line, we like our O-line, especially especially since it's a strong O-line. No one at right end, but that's a lot of right end, yeah, oh, yeah, Bobby Luke, he, you're not playing, ever, so let's get rid of him. We're now at the roster size, but you know what, we might want to cut some people just to Keep the integrity of the team, but it doesn't look like we're going to be doing that. Yeah, Jamal Gross is going to become Guy a lot, and then we have Mike Holloway. He's actually going to be kicker next year. So that there's your roster, and now for the schedule. We're going big time. We're going hard. We're going to start off at home. I guess the home part isn't so hard, but we're going against Nebraska. We're going to face Aiden Mann. We tried to recruit him, we didn't get him. Then we go on the road to the big house. Face Michigan, then on the road to Stanford, first time on the road there. Then Iowa, we come back home for it. And then we go on the road to Texas. Greg Wilson transferred there, by the way. We get a bye. And then we come back home to face Washington. And we go on the road to Washington State, and you know the rest. Home against Oregon. Actually, we're going to be in the Nike Dome for that one. And then on the road to Corvallis in Oregon State. Come back home for Utah and stay home for senior day against Boise State before going on the road one last time to face California. And that is your schedule. We have the Nebraska game coming up. I hope to see you there, but until then, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and have a nice day.